round of applause for Robbie. Uh, 216, Stony Brook University. Um, interpreting visual culture, we deal with a lot of media. What we're doing for our off-off Broadway show at the Tank is uh, American to Cameron. We're bringing many stories of this American life into a stage time of, I hope, about an hour. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if it were 100 minutes. FaceTime, FaceTime. Um, I've asked a certain, there's a core group of actors who will be telling stories from the, the original Decameron of 600 years ago, set during the time of the plague. Um, I, the premise here is that America's kind of in a spiritual plague right now. Well, a plague. Constipation. Constipation, uh, relativity, which isn't a bad thing. There are relative ethics, there's... There's uh, relative imperatives, there are different styles of living, uh, ethical, sexual, familial, racial, stuff like that. And everyone's sometimes afraid of the other coming down on their style of living. But we're, we're going to examine that in this piece. We're using a lot of techie, gadgety, gimmicky things to, to provide a feed into it. It's a big experiment. I've asked Robbie and three or four, five, six other actors to prepare their arc of a story. Mm -hmm. And I'm about to launch off with Robbie's story. Robbie, this story's about, just in one sentence, what? War. Okay, war. That's one word. That's great. Um, here we go. And Robbie, uh, let's, let's kind of find the arc, tell your story, and keep everyone on the edge of their seat. Well, my name is Robert Schilling. I was a corporal in the United States Marine Corps. I served in Iraq in 2004 to 2005. I was a field radio operator. So you had the radio on your back. I had the radio on my back. I was the target the whole time <laughs> with a big <laughs> antenna on my back. But it was basically like a target, you know. But I was... Hold on. Did you get shot at? I got shot at by uh, AK-47s, RPGs, mortars, missiles. I got... Uh, the most dangerous thing, I think, is the IEDs, which is the <laughs> improvised explosive devices. On the road. Well, yeah, that was the most dangerous because you're just driving down the road and all of a sudden, pop, and... Um, Four or five Humvees are out. Out. Wow. Um, so, uh, beginning, middle, end, start your story. Well, my story, you know, I, I, I had so many... First, I'd like to say that I think it was a great opportunity for me to, to join the Marine Corps uh, instead of going to college right off the bat. 9-11 uh, affected me very... Uh, very you know deeply and I felt like it was a time for me to step up as a man my grandparents uh, on both sides they were in World War two Korea and um, I just felt like it was something a man was supposed to do growing up you're supposed to serve your country um, and I did it in a time of war and and yeah I get you know the the back slapping and the drink free drinks in the bar but I still deal with it every day the uh, the uh, post-traumatic stress ah, you know okay. but while I was there I, I, uh, I the first day I landed in country it was August 24th it was my sister's birthday it took me um, I got off the plane and I thought I was it was so hot that I thought I was right next to the engine of the plane and then I realized oh shit this is how it's gonna be for the rest of the time sweating my face off you know, it's a desert, there's sand everywhere, uh, the horizon, the, the, the bugs, the flies, all that shit, you know. I uh, never knew what I was going to do every day. They gave me a different mission every day, whether it would be go and pick up this guy, find that guy. It was like a apocalypse now where there was, there was some sort of order to the chaos, but everyone felt like, oh shit, what am I doing here, you know. Everyone felt, we were kids. You were 18? or I was 18. I couldn't even drink. And uh, they sent me off to war. Yeah, you're getting shot at. You can't drink, but you're getting <laughs> yeah. shot at. And, uh, God, I mean, one of the most vivid images I have in my head that I deal with is this time where I was uh, attached to tanks. And we had to go from block to block clearing out houses um, because I was in a big battle of Fallujah, uh, Phantom Fury. Wow. It was the bloodiest battle since Vietnam. Uh, it was street fighting, you know, uh, people just bunkered into the city. That was uh, a full city, you know, a, 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 a tiny New York City. And the funny thing is, all the highways look just like New the Long Island highways. All the signs are green. 
Right. You know, all, all the backs. It's weird. It was really weird. But one of the... It was like a dream, you know. I was in this tank. It's metal everywhere. It's uncomfortable. It's hot. I got this radio on my head. I can't see what's going on outside of it. You know, you got one guy that's driving. You got another guy up in the turret. And we were clearing out houses. We were, we were at backing up infantry who were going into the houses on the radio with me. And they would be like, okay, uh, we have three KIA, uh, uh, three guys killed in action. Of theirs or the other? Of the other. Okay. of, uh, you know, the insurgents. Um, and so we just cleared this house. Um, three guy, three KIAs. I, you can hear it all on the radio. Pop, pop, pop. The guy goes, we have three confirmed kills. Uh, the house is clear. So uh, we had a, a breather, about five minutes to take a, take a, bre uh, a rest uh, before we move on to the next block. And there was a uh, Quickie Mart or a 7-Eleven uh, that was right next door, and all the guys wanted to go and raid it and get some uh, cigarettes. Uh -huh. <laughs> shitty, shitty, shitty Iraqi cigarettes. But we smoked them. And um, <laughs> so the guy was like, uh, my staff sergeant said, you can stick your head out and, and uh, look around for a little bit while the other guys go in and run in the store. And there must have been a pet shop with all these exotic birds that got destroyed. And when I stuck my head out, and I'm sticking my head out into rubble, you know, all the houses are burning, uh, the buildings are collapsed, and there were these beautiful birds of paradise that were flying all around. They would look like, uh, you know, they all were like colors, like fruity drinks that you get in the Bahamas. Like you know? peacocks Pe and no, no, like, cockatoos. Like and cockatoos and parrots and greens. And, and I stuck my head out. You know, I didn't expect to see that at all. I, it was like a dream for me. Uh, I felt like I was all right for a second. I felt at peace for a second in the wow. time of it all, you know? And um, I have dreams about it now all the time. And, I, and I've, you know, I've seen the worst parts of the war. And I don't know why this image sticks with me so much. It was just the contradiction of seeing such horrible things and then also such beauty too right uh, you know and um that that's one of the images that sticks with me uh a lot you know i i, I don't know what it means i deal with it every day it's hard for me to wake up every day you know was there a danger in even sticking your head oh out yeah absolutely right. but by that time i was so used to getting shot at that i didn't even flinch anymore i don't know if it was because i didn't give a shit anymore or if it was because I just got used to it. But, I mean, the first times that you hear incoming, you don't know where it's coming, you never do. You're on a base in the middle of shit nowhere, and uh, you're taking a shit in a, in a port john and you hear the sirens for the incoming, and you're like, oh, God, I hope I have time to wipe my ass so I don't die with my fucking dick in my hand. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> but, you know, um, that's the life that you, that you go into. And, um, but... But what it did do was give me a lot of experience, you know, life experience in the rawest, you know. What, what are you going to do when someone is shooting at you? What are you going to do when you see your buddy covered in blood? What are you going to do? Wow. Wow. So every, every day, sun every up, sun day, down. Every day, sun up, sun down. And I had a real problem with it. At first, I had this horrible anxiety. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. The adrenaline, you know. And then, and then there's the boredom of war, which, right. which is the worst part because that's when you start making dumb decisions with people. You know, you you start seeing people lose it a little bit, and they and they are acting a little bit more primal than they should be in this type of thing. Even during the boredom, there's one thing I wanted. We mentioned this before, Robbie. This like it's. You know, we're, you guys are in college and you're mm. doing your work and some you're having relationships, basically. Mm. And then I hope all of you get the pink slip somewhere in your life because that's a real educational. But when you get the pink slip in and Iraq. you're in the middle of war. Oh, my God. So they... this is what I want to say about amplification. You had one story of a guy. Okay, so you see, suddenly you see your boyfriend or girlfriend walking hand in hand with someone else. You go like, oh, shit. shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then maybe you'll bomb out on a chem test or whatever. Yeah. It's like, and then next week you'll pack, you'll pick yourself up. But 
the amplification, talk a little about the amplif like a pink slip in Iraq. So a pink slip in Iraq, it could come either way. It could come in a letter. You know, we have technology now, and we have places where you can use the computers. It can come in, a, it can come in an email. It can come, and there's phone centers. You know, the phone centers are shitty, but you, you can talk. So it can come either way, but the same effect happens. This feeling of, of despair, you know, like, what the fuck do I have to go home to? No one cares. No one gives a shit. No one cares. No one cares. So you said this particular guy got a oh, pink slip. Oh, this guy. I was uh, on a couple missions with him. He was in the Navy. He was a corpsman. You know, a little uh, soft looking. <clears throat> you could tell that it was really hard on him. I wasn't really friends with him because I was always attached to somebody differently. You know, it wasn't like I... I uh, when you're in the situation, you become friends really quick, you know. Oh, this is good. Where are you from? Well, I'm from here. This is great. Okay, I like you. I can trust you now for this next day, right. you know. But you do distance, each other, you do distance uh, yourself with others because they're going to die. And they look at you the same way. Yeah. That your number kid, could be yeah, up. This kid, he got a letter, and, and, and um, it was, you know, I'm sorry, I found uh, another guy. Dear John. Dear John, Judy's got uh, got me, and um, and he shot himself in the head. He, Did uh, he show people the letter or say I'm bummed because of it? He just no, you you just saw the change in his attitude, and I think some of the closer friends of his knew uh, because after somebody kills themselves in Iraq, they throw a memorial for him, and then everyone get, has to go to suicide prevention class. Wow. Uh, Was that effective? No. 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 Wow. So this guy shot himself. There was a lot of times. There was this other kid, Wrinkler. Um, God bless him. He shot himself right in the head cleaning his weapon. They said he was just cleaning his weapon, but nobody cleans their weapon with a round in the chamber. Wow. Just too much for him? Are you? No one knows the cause and effect behind that? No one knows the cause and effect, but the funny thing about it was, and this is how uh, un humane uh, a military type thing is the next week I lost a polypro which is a it gets cold in the desert at night I was there uh, you know during the winter too and I needed a new polypro it's, it's like a it's like a long john top you know like uh, insulated right under you know and I go to supply and I said I need a polypro they said yeah no problem take it I was wearing it for about a week. I was take, coming back from a shower, and I picked it up, and I, on the tag it said, wrinkle-free. I was like, oh, wrinkle-free? I never heard that. And then I looked at it really close, and it was Wrinkler. It was his. Wow. So right after uh, he killed himself, they just took all his clothes and all his supply, and they put it right back in supply for some other poor soul to get it. Oh, my God. And that was really bad luck. I felt I didn't know what to do about that. I gave it back, you know, and I cursed them out a little bit. but Wow. I felt like that was really bad luck. So you think, like, chance and it's probably tough not to become superstitious in situations. Oh, like yeah. That. I was superstitious to begin with. I, you know, I had my certain things. I had a fifty cal round always in my pocket, like right here. I mean, not in my pocket, on my flak chest, uh, you know, on the boat. Good luck. Good luck stuff. I always kept a, uh, a card of St. Michael's in my back pocket. Wow. My, uh, the protector a, saint. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. And I, but I'm spiritual in a sense that I don't believe that there's this one God out there. I think that we're all kind of connected in this uncollective unconsciousness of... Uh, Even with your enemies, to a certain extent. You know, that, the enemy thing I haven't really uh, dealt with too much. The, you know, um, I'm still dealing with that. I've been home for a couple of years now, still dealing right. with how I feel about the enemy. You know, whether... And I've come to terms with it. I think that we were just kids, you know. Uh, the movie I just made, I, I wrote a song and I was singing about how we were just kids in the sand. Just kids. People telling us what to do, and we did it. You know, whether I agreed with it or not, I still had to do it. That's the one thing that a lot of people say. World War II, there were 18-year-olds flying bombers. This is like a children's crusade. But that's how every war is. It's it's somehow the older men capitalize older on men men's and they on take men's the testosterone. And, oh yeah, and then, and and you get you get brainwashed in a way. And the Marine Corps is very good at that. Their training and their boot camp is superb in that, in the uh, in the instilling these values that uh, you don't even second guess. This is uh, great, Robbie. This is great. The, I love the arc from the the heat of the battle to this beautiful birds of paradise, even into like. Than the guy with the pink slip. So I think this is great consolidation. So we'll we'll give Robbie a hand. We'll talk to you soon.
on YouTube.